ground of the breeze, well, there isn't a move on any of the flags on the ground. The tricolour blowing slightly across the field, but I think the sun is the only part of the weather that's having any serious effect on the game. A bright sun behind down in this first half. And out comes the ball, it comes to Peter Daly on the halfway line for Offley. Daly tips it out along the far wing. Coming down for it now is Howard Donnelly. Donnelly has it now 50 yards out from the down goal. He's been tackled by George Laverty. He's still got the ball. He sends it in a high one across into the centre. And it is brought down out there and held by Mick Casey. Casey has run 21 yards line. He's going through, take the shot, and it's gone. The goal! And so to 1962, when Kerry faced the men from Roscommon. To get to this final, Roscommon had to fight very hard. It had been a memorable Connacht final for Roscommon, with their 33-year-old captain, Jerry O'Malley, dominating. He had brought his county to a one-point victory over Galway. Roscommon had then gone on to beat Cavan by two points, and now they faced the Kingdom of Kerry. It seemed as if the Connacht champions were on their way to their first All-Ireland medal in many years, but it was not to be. Mick O'Connell, Mick O'Dwyer and Tom Long played magnificent football in this game and Mick himself was in deadly form, scoring seven points altogether from freeze. Kerry's final score of one goal and 12 points to Roscommon's one goal and four left no margin for doubt. Now watch for O'Connell's giant leap for the ball in this 1962 game against Dublin. Meant for John Timmons, but Sean O'Sheehy sees it and clears. Des McCain. To Mickey Whelan. Mickey Whelan, a very clever ball, but his own man gets in the way of McIntaggart. Kevin Coffey. Mick O'Connell tumbled there, but certainly still in possession. And he wins a free, but he certainly came down very heavily. Let's see it again. Purely accidental there, two players going for the ball. Here comes O'Connell again. Mick O'Connell, Colo and a solo run for Kerry, he's gone 20 yards. There's a shot for goal, he's tossed it, but no, he just puts it wide. A great effort there by O'Connell. It's a team of good individuals. We often discuss that uh, when I speak coming home from those games or uh, doing those years with Mick O'Dwyer. And we were used to be comparing the individual Kerry players against the Galway players at the time and we couldn't see the reason why we were being beaten time after time and that was the conclusion we came to, that because Galway played with teamwork and Kerry didn't at the time, played a very individual game. And why was that, Mick? Why were they? Why were the Kerry team not playing with teamwork? Well, it's, it must have been the system of uh, managing the team or something like that. The, most players, I think, in Gaelic have been inclined to be individualistic and unless they're uh, handled otherwise, that's the way the game they'll play in the field. Kick out by Mick Morris. Out it comes to the far side of the field. Jody O'Connor in possession now on the 50-yard line. Sending it upfield, Mick O'Connell has moved into the centre. There's some switches here, and it's worked. And here comes Mick O'Connell up along the left wing now. Racing out for it, Jojo Barrett, trying to save it from going over the end line. He saves it from going over. He's tackled by Ender Conner, and Jojo Barrett sends a high, lobbing ball across the goal by goal. Fits it up by Noel Tierney. Mick O'Connell's there now on the 21-yard line. He takes his shot, and he sends it over the bar for a point. Over the bar for a point for Kerry and Mick O'Connell. And Mick O'Connell has been moved in as centre-half, has been moved in as centre-half forward with Mick O'Dwyer left half forward, and if he has, John Donlan has moved after him, and John Donlan is now playing on him. And the score, however, is four points to two, but it's Mick O'Connell in possession to Mick Fleming. Fleming out to the left wing. Line ball taken, and it goes into the centre where Mick O'Connell has moved into the centre of the field position now, and John Donlan first timing it, ballooning it away down the field. And John Keenan trying to get into possession. Just can't. Back there. And Galway going right through in front of the goal. Johnny Connolly coming out for the ball. And a short-fisted pass out to Todd O'Donoghue, who's been tackled. But Todd gets his kick in right up into the centre of the field. Waiting for it there. And under the dropping ball is Mick O'Connell. And here he comes. Away up the field. Soloing. Then passing to Mick O'Dwyer. Mick O'Dwyer, 50 yards out now. Being tackled. It doesn't worry this number 11 of Kerry. And he tipped it back to O'Connell. O'Connell shouldered outside the 21-yard line. 
has fallen on the ground. He still has the ball, and the referee has penalised him for holding the ball too long. Early on, we were saying that Mick O'Connell wasn't in the game, but <laughs> since we've said it, believe me, he's very much in the game. He is, in fact, now playing at centre field with Tony O'Sullivan gone into the half-forward line for the Kerryman. And from this free, it goes straight to the Kerryman, Mick O'Connell with that number 12 on his back. And Mick from Valencia sends it over to Pat Griffin. Pat Griffin, 60 yards out from the Galway goal. Across to Mick O'Dwyer, 50 yards out from the Galway goal. Mick O'Dwyer straight through into the centre, where Tom Long gets it, 10 yards out, 14 now. He's trying to make an angle for himself. He takes the kick, and it's deflected out over the end line. And slipping off a foot there, going loosely towards uh, Mick Fleming. Mick Fleming's kick eventually going to Mick O'Connell. Mick O'Connell on the ground. John Donlan behind him, waiting, anticipating his turn, then Mick O'Connell tipping it back to John McCarthy and John sending it well up the field. Brought down now by Jojo Brown, and a great save! A great save there by John Garrity. A blinding shot from close in by Jojo Barrett, deflected over the end line at the expense of a 50, but it looked as if it was going to be a goal, and going into pat him on the back there, Noel Tierney, very much relieved, no doubt, by that great save. The ball went off the goalkeeper, out over the end line, and so the attacking team gets a 50-yard free kick from the 50-yard uh, line opposite the place from which the ball went out. Mick O'Connell to take this one. And he lobs it in towards the goal mouth. Brought down by Noel Tierney, and Tierney, this thundering man from Milltown, Mount County Galway, sends it a short pass towards Mick Garrett. Mick Garrett for Galway, up the centre of the field. Manny McDonough, Todd O'Donoghue going for it together. Breaks between them. Paul O'Donoghue getting it now, being tackled by three Galway men and shaking them off as he sends Kerry attacking again. The attack broken up slightly, but the ball goes to Mick O'Connell. John Donlan racing to the ball, getting it right through the centre. Now Seamus Layden coming across on the far side, getting it, having it knocked out of his hand, and he's getting it again. Fisting it to Matty McDonough. Matty can't quite race out far enough to it, and the ball goes out over the line. 14 minutes gone in the second half. And Kerry playing with a slight breeze in this second half. Johnny O'Sullivan manhandled out there and he doesn't seem to like it as the referee blows his whistle and awards a free to Kerry. Just short of 70 yards out from the Galway goal out in the centre, Mick O'Connell to take it. And knowing the fighting spirit of Kerry, I'd say the next 15 minutes are going to be a thriller dinner. And in comes the ball into the goal mouth. It's blocked out. It comes out. John B draws on it. Gets it out of it the field. Mick O'Connell reaching down for it now. And Mick is well and truly but illegally brought down there with a swinging round the side of his jaw there as he was brought down and there's a free in for Kerry. 35 yards out from the Galway goal. Mick O'Connell to take it, almost in front of it. And he sends it high and he has sent it over the bar for a point for Kerry to narrow the gap now. Mick O'Connell the scorer. The referee having a look at his watch. I don't think he's the only one doing just that at the moment. Now she his kick out. And there goes the final whistle, and Galway are champions. Galway are champions. And what a scene of wild enthusiasm. That's what he said that a year ago, they said that Galway, who had beaten in last year's final, would be back soon. And how right he was as he presents the cup now to an obviously highly delighted John Donlan. Everything set now, the band moving off the field. Backs and forwards in their positions. Can Galway retain their title? Can Kerry win their 21st? That's the question of the moment. Referee checking his watch. Many others at Crow Park doing the same and the game is on. And first to break away are Kerry. Mick O'Connell getting the ball up the field to Mick O'Dwyer. Mick O'Dwyer with the ball in his hand. Then up along the wing, but blocked out by Martin Newell of Galway, up to 50 yards of his own goal. Martin way up the field. The ball chipped down onto the far side. Jeremy Connor is judging it, so does Cyril Dunn, and it's Mick O'Connell for Kerry. Up to Terry O'Shea, who is pushed in the back. It's quite legal to shoulder the man, but you can't push him and you can't hold on to him. Legal too to hold the ball in your hand, but illegal to pick it straight up off the ground. This free taken by Mick O'Connell, well up the field. Well held. Martin 
Muir with the ball now in the center of the field, tipping it out to the wing coach, Seamus Layden. He's beaten there by Seamus Murphy for Terry to Dennis O'Sullivan in the center of the field. Dennis, a curling one across to the far side. Jojo Burnett trying to get to it. Can't quite. Ball down the play referee is Bonnie's whistle and the wards are free to Kerry from about 40 yards out for a bit of pushing and dragging there. And a free for Kerry, dead straight in front of the goal and about 40 yards out, Mick O'Connell to take it. Mick O'Connell sends it high and over the bar for the first score of the game for Kerry. Mick O'Connell, who is one of the modern legends of Gaelic football, sending that one over for Kerry to make the score now. Gone by two points, Kerry won. It was in 1968 that Jackie Lyon took over, really after a very bad year in 1967. Probably the worst Kerry team of my time in lined out that year. And uh, there was something badly needed to, to bring the game back to life in the county. And Jackie was the man that did that. When he took over the team in 1968, really it was, it was very poor. He did a wonderful job. He transformed it. And uh, I think, but for Jackie, Kerry would never have won the two Ireland's of 1969 and 70. Now, to go back to 68 for a moment, like, how did he reform the team? You know, what did he do? Jackie was one of the few men in my time that I could say his enthusiasm was infectious, that any player there was an association would bound to, was bound to lift his game and do his very best for him. And I think that's the way the Kerry players worked with Jackie. What were the most memorable parts of 1968 for you? 1968, I probably uh, the winner of the Munster final, Killarney. It was, uh, it was a surprise. Cork had won the two previous years, and uh, this Kerry team was really on trial. And Cork had started off that game in Killarney very strongly, had a good lead up. And uh, in the second half, really, Jackie's training showed in the team for the first time. I thought, well, maybe in the final then, it was a bit of a disappointment, no doubt, because of the way down won it. But but for the great stats that Down did have that day, I doubt if they would have won in the end. Kerry were playing good football that day then? Yeah, Kerry played good football all right that day, but they were fighting an uphill battle with an eight points lead against them. Really, they'd come so far and Down might pick a score again and it was very hard to win a game like that. Could you describe for me the goal that Sean O'Neill got? Yeah, I can remember that goal all right. It came at a vital time for Down early in the game. It, uh, it was a harmless looking ball. It could have either gone wide or just barely scoped inside the very top of the upright when it dropped dead down at the post. And Sean O'Neill was in like a flash to touch it in. A lot of people think that it was a very lucky goal that Sean happened, just happened to be running there. But I think to the tribute to Sean that he was so eager for the ball that he did follow through. Up and down, 35 yards out, a curling ball that's up there, and it's a goal! The ball hit the upright and Sean O'Neill, Sean O'Neill, the goal. The ball hit the upright, came down, and it came onto the foot of the stumbling Sean O'Neill and into the net it went. What a surprise goal. And it's down in the attack again. The attack broken up out in the centre of the field. But it is a... John Murphy of Down with the ball now. Willie Doyle way up the feet of John Purdy. John Purdy being tackled by Seamus Murphy. John Purdy still with the ball. Seamus Murphy still after him. 60 yards out from the Kerry goal. Into the centre to Colin McAlarney. On the 50. On the 40. On the 30. Tony Sullivan knocks the ball out of his hand. In there too, just Tony gets his boot to it. Out to the far side of the field. Where it is tapped on the far wing there by Eamon O'Donoghue, he's beaten and the ball goes into the centre, brought down by Mick Fleming, gone back to help the defence Mick Fleming way up the feed, where it goes to James Milligan of Down, and the Down man from 60 yards out, sends a dropping between Paul O'Donoghue and Sean O'Neill and the referee is blown his whistle and awards a free in to Down free to Down 14 yard line and Paddy Doherty is the taker the amazing Paddy, who has already scored a goal and 21 points in the championship this year, and that makes it a goal in 22. It's over the bar. <laughs> Paddy Doherty, the scorer of that one, making the score down 1 3, carry 1 point. We make it about seven and a half minutes gone in the first half. 
And the kick out by Paul O'Donnell, who goes towards Mick O'Connell, but it's kept down by Mick, and it goes to Petty Doherty of down. Down attacking again. A long ball, twisted out by Paul O'Donnell. Comes to the side of the 